Lately, I've been thinking about what are the skills someone has to have to be successful at reselling. Could be on Mercari, eBay, Amazon. It doesn't really matter where. It could be a local store. Uh, it pretty much takes the same skills across all these platforms and locations. And I've been thinking about it, and I wrote down a few bullet points and some main things. So I'm going to go over those with you and just kind of talk about what I'm thinking about. And uh, hopefully this helps you see maybe some areas you're lacking in or some things you excel at. Maybe you can change your business to more uh, focus on those successful things you've done. So the first thing we're going to talk about is product knowledge. We're going to break down product knowledge into a few things because if you don't know what you're selling, that could be an issue. Uh, you have to have an in-depth knowledge of the things you're selling. It's really difficult just to make money doing pure arbitrage. It works. I mean, retail arbitrage is a real thing, but the deeper you get, uh, the more, I don't know, lean the economy gets, the less chance there's going to be for selling PS5, for example, for like twice what they sell at stores. I mean, just right now, you can go to Best Buy and see uh, PS5s for 500 bucks all throughout the store. And I know there's more things than just PS5s. And I know there's always going to be people who are checking for, uh, you know, price alerts, uh, and, and price errors across lots of websites. But I think that it definitely is not gonna hurt you, at least, to become a, a lot more aware of the, um, the things that your products are and what they aren't, uh, and how you can differentiate them between other products. Here's a great example. So I've been selling a lot of Pokemon cards. I've been buying collections and divvying them up and selling them either individually or in lots. And with Pokemon cards, there's years, there's additions, and there's variations on Pokemon cards for shoes. For anything with collectible value, especially over the past like 20 years, we've been seeing a lot of delineation amongst individual SKUs or what would we call SKUs, I guess they're different SKUs, but um, small variations, tweaks in design, stuff like that. And if you're unaware of those things, uh, if you're unaware, for example, why a coin is going to be one grade versus the other one being low and one being higher, worth more money, you are definitely going to leave a lot of money on the table and you don't want to do that. Uh, you really want to know what your audience is looking for and when you know what the little differences are between those few, you know, those several things, you're going to be able to understand your audience and kind of put yourself in the position of those audiences. When I was doing you know, more product-based marketing, what we would always do, whether it was with a team or on my own, I personally or the team would create customer avatars, not the big blue people, but an idea of who's buying this. So for coins, who's buying a $15 Mercury dime? Somebody who really cares a lot uh, about the details. They have a discerning eye and they're doing this because they either think it's a good investment or they uh, they're really, you know, have a, a what's it called? They're, they're, they're a numist, a numismatic. They, they love coins. It's, it's, you know, a love, a passion of theirs. And when you understand that, it really does hit home how important it is to understand the differences between a lower grade and a higher grade. Who's the kind of person who's spending 800 bucks in a pair of shoes? Who's the kind of person who's spending 15 bucks on a, a video game where the disc only version sells for six dollars? You have to kind of ask these questions because especially in a competitive marketplace, you really need to be pushing the margins. Uh, really trying to get more money for your individual products. Video games is a great example. I sell tons of video games for three or four bucks more than my nearest competitor. Uh, and part of that is the way I list them, the way I title them, the way I market them and promote them. But part of that is also understanding that if a game is in mint condition or looks to be in mint condition, um, or you know is in very good condition, any condition really at all, that there is a bit of leeway you can have um, in that pricing. Being able to set competitive prices isn't always uh, necessarily being the lowest price. Sometimes it's being the lowest price in a certain condition, or sometimes it's developing a relationship with buyers where they know that you're going to uh, deliver a product faster than someone else, and they're willing to pay up a few bucks. Now you're not gonna like charge five times as much because you have great customer service, but you might be able to charge three bucks more. And in the scheme of things, you know, across 10,000 sales, making four bucks more, you know, you can do the math. It's quite a bit of money. There's also the marketing and the communication skills. Now, a lot of people might say there's no marketing on eBay or Amazon or, you know, wherever else, but look at Whatnot. You know, Whatnot is 
extremely marketing heavy. It might not be the conventional marketing that you're used to. No one's putting up whatnot billboards, at least not yet they aren't. But uh, there's understanding how you can talk to buyers, how you can create a, a relationship with the buyers, what techniques work on what channels. What makes someone a successful eBay seller is not the same as a successful whatnot seller. It's not the same as a successful Amazon seller or uh, owning a pawn shop or having garage sales or doing card shows. All these different sales channels require uh, a different way you speak to people. You talk about the things, the way you present them, uh, the way you handle customer interactions. If you're trying to get recurring customers, I think it's pretty obvious you have to be a lot more, um, I don't know, empathetic of, of, the, of the problems, a lot more responsive. Uh, whereas if it's something like Amazon FBA and you have 10,000 SKUs and they're all one-offs, maybe it makes more sense just to refund the item or, ooh, no, no, this is, you know, sacrilegious, you have an angry customer. You know, I'm not saying you want to have angry customers. I'm just saying uh, that maybe it's not the worst thing in the world to uh, prioritize your efforts. And one of the ways you can stop having angry customers is, again, communicating what you're selling. On a platform like Whatnot, it might be uh, kind of difficult to write down what every individual item is the way you can on eBay or Mercari or your Facebook. Uh, but establishing uh, a precedent for what you're selling and the way you sell things and creating a rhythm or a pattern of communication is going to help you in your description writing uh, and getting into a rhythm, like I said, and really using your time wisely. And it's gonna help your potential buyers understand what you offer them in terms of a description or in terms of images or anything like that. Um, you know, there's more communicative aspects beyond just writing a description too. There's gonna be conflicts. And uh, maybe, like I said, that means you refund the buyer. Maybe it means, uh, you know, you say you're sorry, you offer them a coupon. Really, it's really gonna depend on, again, who's your customer avatar? What do they value? How likely are they, based on an exceptionally good customer experience, to come back? It's, um, it really doesn't, there's not a one size fits all way of talking about it. Uh, it's a skill you have to develop. Um, you know, the way you develop skills in negotiating for buys, uh, you're gonna develop skills for dealing with angry buyers. Uh, uh, and it helps you really understand how important it is to uh, develop a healthy relationship with these potential customers. On eBay, you know, the feedback is like uh, what everyone's trying to go after. But recurring buyers and recurring sales are far more valuable in terms of ROI uh, than a single positive feedback. A single negative feedback can be bad, but you know, on a one on a one to one scale, having that recurring buyer who might come back ten times to your store. That's something I remember from my marketing classes in college. Uh, they said that one of the reasons that grocery stores try so hard to have great customer relationships is because once a customer finds a grocery store, and I know you know, eBay isn't a grocery store, but once a customer finds someone who can uh, develop these kinds of relationships with them, uh, you really want to nurture that and take care of that. Now, we have the first two things that are much more customer facing. Now, let's turn our, our eyes inward and talk about how you run your business, specifically time management and organizational skills. Now, this is something I've been guilty of throughout the years and I'm working on constantly. And that shouldn't mean uh, you know, to say they shouldn't listen to me, or it shouldn't mean to say that there's like a, an end goal to get. I think that all of these skills are the kinds of things that you wanna be constantly working on. These banker's boxes back here, that's been like the big jump for me, being able to create a, um, a replicable and efficient time management process that ensures I can get a, a photo of an item and I can know where it is when I can pull it out really helps uh, grow revenue and grow profit. How many times have you been searching for an item for 10 minutes uh, and it just totally derails your momentum? It ends up costing you in time probably as much, if not more, than the item's actually worth. Uh, and it really causes you to question what you're doing and leads to things like burnout. If you have efficient processes like inventory, like purchasing systems, like shipping systems, Personally, my opinion is that's going to help you fight burnout uh, and really be a lot more happy and content with your job, especially if you're the one who's developed those systems. You know, hopefully this video helps you understand what I think and what most people might agree with makes a good reseller across any platform. My name is Blake. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys later.